Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone here on the call for the Community Outreach Revamp Kickoff Part 2. Here we go. Um, we had a call last week, and it went really well. We had like 16, 17 people show up, and today we have 10, and I see new faces. So that is super cool. Um, I'm going to drop a link here in the chat. This is where we have notes and things for these meetings. So you're welcome to jump in there today and put your name under the attendees. Apparently I need to sign in. Oh, I don't see myself. Okay. No. Nah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. So uh, put your name as an attendee there, and uh, you'll see some other notes as well under um, today's meeting. But we can we'll get to that a little bit later. I want to do a round of quick introductions for the people who are on the call. Uh, just uh, your name and how you're involved with Fedora or why you're here. So. Uh, my name is Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator, and I am here to make things happen. All right, I will call down the list just so there's no confusion. Akash Deep, Akash Deep, next. Uh, hi, Mary. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Akash Deep. People may know me as Toxic Order with two zeros at O's. So uh, I started with Fedora writing a documentation for NVIDIA Optimus uh, settings, but then on I moved on to the classroom session for Git 101 with Pedro. And then I've been helping with stuff here and there with mostly an easy fix, infra, repository, stuff like that. Thank you. All right. Uh, Justin, I know he said he's cooking breakfast, but if you would like to introduce yourself, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, uh, my name is Justin. I've been a contributor for the last five years, and I've been an ambassador from North America since 2017. Um, I do a couple of different things around the Fedora community. Just happy to be a part of this conversation and see some action moving forward on ambassadors. So looking forward to the conversation today. Cool. Thanks, Justin. Mariana? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mariana. I am a contributor since late 2016, early 2017. Uh, I am based in Toronto, and I am part of the Ambassadors Revamp um, initiative process. Call it however you like. Mariana is a co-lead. All right, next is Radka. Greetings, humans. My name is Radka. I'm a uh... Dotnet Core Quality Engineering Lead at Red Hat and in Fedora I was a member of various groups. We also package .NET for Fedora, which by the way we have succeeded to fully build it from source, even for ARM64 in Fedora 33. Um, <laughs> I'm also a member of Ambassadors Group for a couple of years and I'm sad to not see some of these faces in person on custom. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Also, wonderfully short plug. I loved it. Um, next <laughs> is, <laughs> uh, excuse me if I, I mess up your the pronunciation. Sin Carson? Carson? Yeah, Sean Carson it is. Uh, OK. So. I have been, I'm a Fedora ambassador from India. I've been uh, an ambassador in the Fedora project from pretty much the time ambassador started as a concept. So yeah, one of those old ones. Uh, I've been inactive and pretty much not doing anything for the past two, two and a half years. Uh, and that, And I got excited about the conversation in the previous meeting and some chats with Sumantra and Vipul that I thought like, okay, I'll see what's happening and if I could get active and be of use again. 
I am really excited you're here. You have some historical knowledge for us to tap into. So thank you for being on the call today. Uh, next is Sayak. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Sayak Sarkar. Uh, so I am a contributor to Fedora. Uh, like I've been a contributor for active one for uh, the last couple of years and uh, yeah, I've been around the community for quite some time now. And also I'm pretty much interested in uh, open source communities and everything that goes around. So I'm happy to help. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next is Sylvia. Okay. Um, well, my name is Sylvia. I've been ambassador since 2015. I worked uh, with translations and writing articles in Fedora Magazine. At the moment, I'm helping with QA, QA team, uh, chiefly with um, KTE, because I use KDE, so I try to test uh, as much as possible. Um, well, um, that's it. I'm happy to be here. Sylvia, you also you also moderate that Fedora group, right? On Telegram. Yes. yes. Which is a lot of work. I just that's that's a lot of work. So thank you for doing that. All right. So next thank we you. have uh -huh, next we have Sumantro. Uh, hey folks, I'm Shimanto. I um, I am a Fedora QA uh, community lead, so-called engineer. And apparently, I I've been in this role for about four years, and I'm an ambassador for about three years. Sankushan is my mentor, so thanks to him for giving me the guidance uh, whenever required. Uh, if you guys can hear me better now, um, I, I have been in. I have been in this uh, a federal ambassador for the last three years. Sankarshan has been my mentor and he has guided me throughout. So um, I'm the co-lead for the temporary task force and hopeful to work with every one of you as a volunteer, as a participant, as someone who can give us information about historic past and guide us in the right direction. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks, Sumantra. Next, we have Vipul. Hello. Um... I started as QA contributor, moved to packaging. Now I maintain Fedora CI infrastructure and general infrastructure. And that's it. Sankarshan sponsored me to ambassador group. I don't remember how many years ago it was, but it was definitely not. It was after some time when Sumantro became an ambassador. I'll say that a relative times. So yeah, it's really good to see Sankarshan here and in fact, all of you. So I'm very glad to be here. Let's Thanks. get started. Thanks, Vipul. Oh, last but not least, Alberto. Hi, everyone. I'm Alberto. I ambassador since two years ago, maybe. Um, I'm here. I'm here for help. So, this out. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So, the first meeting we, I really took a lot of time to talk about. Some of the history and the background. I'm going to just rein that into like two minutes. And I want to focus on making this meeting just a little bit more interactive. And um, maybe, well, not maybe, I'm ready to assign some tasks and hopefully get um, some stuff rolling, right? So really quick, uh, you know, this is something that I've known about for years. Everyone kind of talks about the ambassador program. It's longstanding. And at one point, uh, it was like really flourishing, and it's it's even been modeled after um, in other communities. So along the way, things kind of uh, hit a lot of road bumps, and uh, different things happened that uh, kind of brought the decline of the program. So I came on. I had. Uh, some things to help me along a lot of these stories, and I wrote up a proposal. So uh, the Mindshare Committee approved that proposal with some edits, and uh, we've I've been working with the co-leads, Mariana and Sumantro, to kind of get things organized. We have actually a lot of things rolling already, and very cool news. We are working on um, making this a Fedora objective. So I think it's going to be an awesome Fedora objective because so many so many of us are going to be working on it so hands-on. 
um, we have this team, but then there's tasks that are going to be going to a lot of the teams within my chair. So um, that's kind of a general summary. <laughs> if anyone has specific questions, we can kind of do an open floor at the end, but I'm gonna guide this a little bit right now. I know that um, Google Meet doesn't save the chat, so I'm just gonna drop the HackMD link in one more time. <clears throat> Make sure everyone has that. Um, the first thing I really wanna talk about today is um, we're not even, we could talk about it if you, if you, if you care to speak up, but we can also just jump into this hack and D think about how you are able to contribute, um, or how it could be a skill set that you have now, or it could be something that you want to improve. You know, other people on the team can kind of mentor you with that. So you'll see TTF skill sets, desired areas of contribution. So <clears throat> This is just to get an idea of um, what different skills we have on the team. And this will help the co-leads and myself delegate work and to make the projects more success and also to make sure that you guys are fulfilled in the work that you're doing. So uh, just drop into the HackMD. I see Syak has put some stuff in here. Um, and I'm not signed in on Chrome, but I am on Firefox. <laughs> the tab struggle is real. So I put in there um, project management, design. I, I want to help with a marketing plan. So um, maybe we should go around and talk about how we might want to contribute. So Mariana, do you want to go next? As you might have already noticed, I have not added anything on the HackMD, but uh, I can add some of my skills, which include uh, project management, content creation, when it comes to, oh, it's hard to edit because everyone is there, uh, content creation and outreach. You are muted. No. <laughs> it wouldn't be a meeting without that. Um, how about Radka? I'm curious how you would like to contribute to the project. Well, somewhat related to ambassadors is that I am responsible for Fedora on Reddit and uh, Discord. So if, and if there is a way I can help on those platforms. I think that's awesome. Okay, so this is a, uh, also a thing that we are gonna be doing today, an interactive thing, which is what do you think an ambassador does in 2020? Like, what does it mean to be like a modern tech ambassador or basically a digital ambassador? And I think that the communities that you're working with, the Reddit community, et cetera, like those are definitely places we should be and we should be making like content for. So I think having you involved in this conversation is great. And actually, I want to add it on to, I'm going to copy this and bring it up here. This is kind of hard to do with a lot of people in here. Okay. So what does a Fedora ambassador do? I just copied and pasted that under today's notes. So <clears throat> um, I guess we could say something like keep a presence or foster a presence on social media platforms. I think that's different than promoting Fedora on social media like fostering a presence in a community is, is different. Definitely. Cool. So I guess I want to call on the, the, the old wise one. 
Thank you, Kirsten. How would you like to contribute to this project in the year 2020 here? <laughs> so, honest confession, I have moved away from doing Fedora things for over a year now. So uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, relearning and understanding what the new direction asks of me. What I put on the HackMD is skills or, uh, or areas in which I'm good at. And I can either contribute myself or help others get up to speed with those, which include if somebody wants to, as an ambassador, create uh, working demos or, of various components in Fedora that make sense and get people interested. I can help work on use cases, personas, uh, and uh, build that stuff. So it's more developer focused, perhaps. But again, it goes back to the thing that I have a lot to learn. Cool. Thank you. I feel like we, we should always keep that mindset. <laughs> There's always a lot to learn, right? Um, uh, Sayek, I'm curious how you would like to. Oh. Mariana, did you have something? Uh, I simply wanted to share the Trello link because Good people call. might get some ideas on anything they might want to add on the uh, on the pad, on the hack and deep. Just cool. give me one second to find the link. <laughs> okay, Sayak, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so sorry if my background noise is too much. Um, so I I'm interested in any in helping out with anything technical, uh, with, whether it be uh, uh, like web dev, DevOps, testing, and apart from that, I am also uh, intermediate, early skilled with designs. So I can either help with the designs myself, or I can uh, also mentor other people in doing any of these things. Uh, Apart from the technical stuff, I am also pretty uh, experienced in uh, outreach, community events, and project management. So any of those, uh, again, I can actively do that myself, and I can also like I'd be more than happy to mentor other people who might be interested in doing that. So yeah. Cool. That's awesome. So I've called on a couple people to get it kind of rolling. Does anyone else want to? Um, jump in with some things that they might feel care to contribute. If not, that's okay. We can work, we can actually move to the Trello board, which is next on the agenda. So we have this Trello board. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with it, it's a board where you add and assign tasks to a certain working team. Currently, in parallel, we have two tasks, uh, processes, and it is the DNI ticket and the commons ticket. Uh, you can go through every single uh, board and task there. Uh, if you have any idea of something that we might be missing or, I don't know, think something is wrong, please let us know so far. And uh, yeah, if you see something that you would really like to work on, you just let us know. Cool. All right, so I looked at my own agenda and I'm gonna correct myself. The next thing on the agenda is talking about what an ambassador does in 2020 a little bit more. So I have that also on the notes. Um, I'll just read out kind of the stuff we have there and get um, us all thinking about different ways uh, we could be reaching out to our own community and reaching out to that, you know, the external community. Um, so promote Fedora on social media, help others use install Fedora for their use case. I think like this might actually be something that's like an event, maybe? I mean, it would be nice to organize into an event, although I guess we should kind of all know how to do that if we wanted to do it in one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, help their friends and colleagues learn more about Linux and Fedora and understand how the bits come together. So I think that's a great 
idea, but you know what else? I don't really know how the bits come together. I work on community. I've done design. I've done um, a lot of other stuff within Fedora. So although I'm very familiar with a lot of the technology, I think another aspect to this is like, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the bits. Maybe as an ambassador you do, or there should be some training. Like maybe I should have that training. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, but I feel like that statement didn't necessarily cover who I am. So that's an interesting thought there or how the bits come together, together or how the community comes together. <clears throat> hold local workshops promoting Fedora. I think we should say hold local or virtual workshops. Show interesting stuff done with Fedora. So what kind of ways would would we show so like blog posts what other things and you guys are all welcome to write in the notes as well i'm in there doing things um, so i have uh so in this regard uh, apart from blog posts and stuff i also have something else in my head um there are a lot of uh, different spins of fedora and a lot of people run really cool applications and uh, stuff on it. So I've seen people in the past use uh, uh, like some of the alternative builds of Fedora into doing into running some really nice applications, uh, which even include uh, small robots and stuff. So we can probably do a coverage of such types of things, things that are uh, out of the ordinary, not uh, like what people do in everyday life, like automation projects and. Uh, at times, even medical applications and stuff like that. I think that's but a cool idea. Higher, because uh, even the Raspberry Pi spin of Fedora is kind of used for stuff like these. People around my college and in my college as well have put into use and have built good stuff from it. And the fact that it's uh, leading its distribution, so it does not bog down into stuff which can be old or can get old down the line. So it gets uh, the technology, which is much more data to the hands of students and the ones who are interested to build stuff quite quickly. So yeah, I would second that. It's a very good um, idea, Sayak. So, uh, so I think we should try to build on other things that exist within Fedora whenever we can. And the first thing I'm thinking of is the how do you Fedora? Do you, there's like a series of a blog posts called How Do You Fedora? And that kind of makes me think of this, but we could kind of upgrade it for this day and age and we could do videos. We could do video interviews, edit them with some cool graphics and make like a series of How Do You Fedora's videos. What do you guys think about that? So are ambassadors the editing ones or the ambassadors who are making videos of themselves talking about how to do Fedora? I think the, ambassadors, what, what the ambassadors would interview people. You're a little bit quiet, Vipal. Yeah, sorry about that. My mic's been weird. So, okay, they'll be interviewing people. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think that like the ambassadors would be the ones to kind of like coordinate it, get it to the right people. So like we'd, ha we'd come up with, okay, here is the interview questions we would be the ones to make you know make the meetings like who who on the team makes sense to interview this person like it might not make sense for me to interview a technical person it might make sense for me to interview like a community person right so we we choose like someone on the team to do the interview then we probably have to work with the design team um on getting some kind of editing done. I know we have Tatika who does video editing. So, you know, that's kind of all the coordination that the ambassador group would do. Does that sound like something that, you know, we want the ambassador group to be working on? So kind of just like spitballing ideas, uh, basically like it could be some kind of like a marketing initiative, like it, it you know, it could be, like that. <laughs> uh, so, Murray, I have uh, one more question uh, over there. Uh, so, with uh, the Fedora release on uh, 
uh, on Lenovo laptops, like being shipped with uh, Lenovo laptops. I'm wondering if there is something that we can do around that as well. Uh, I'm not sure what. It's just a random thought that came to my mind. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about was, and I added this point to the HackMD document. Uh, so back in the day when I was in college, uh, we used to have uh, a, a group of us who were into open source software. We used to host install days and upgrade days. Uh, wherein we would like literally welcome people to come and uh, try out different open source software. At that time, we used to install Fedora, Firefox, and a bunch of other uh, like applications to people's laptops. And what happened was, uh, by the end of the end of two years, the entire uh, batch of like what. 80 people were all running Fedora on their laptops. Uh, but yeah, it was just in our college, uh, just with our batch, but that's a different story altogether. But what I'm thinking is probably that has some potential. I don't know, like there was just a random idea that I wanted to throw out there. I guess. So ambassadors have always been, well, at least according to the good old definition, doing outreach, install fest, release parties and things. I'm wondering how this would spin out in uh, 2020 and with COVID situations. Uh, but yeah, maybe talking more about things, talking point of Fedora's expanding release parties to some kind of Fedora activity days, organizing Fedora virtual hack days, say, say documentation hack days where six hours anyone can come and help, or some kind of training in early one hour where you explain how Antora works and how documentation you can do things around it or how you can use it for your own benefit. Something along those lines. Uh, uh, install fest over virtual would be a really, really, really complicated thing because even in person, you know something is going to break and you are going to hear you broke my laptop. Uh, so I'm not really sure how it would spin out in virtual, but yeah, maybe. So I have an idea here. And this kind of builds on um, this, this structure that I kind of think about community with, which is called Rise. So it's recognition, incentive, support, and empowerment. And that, you know, all communities need all of those to be healthy. So this actually really makes me think about that, right? We can't do install fest, but we can offer people education. Um, and that's actually an incentive and a reason why, you know, we're all kind of here. We've always learned and we've gained things from being a part of Fedora. So I kind of I kind of see it as, um, you know, this maybe providing some kind of education on different topics to get people into the community and learning about it. Obviously, these would be virtual. And another cool thing is for Nest, we had like 500 people or something, and almost half of them had never been to a Fedora event before. So, yes, yeah, Fedora Classroom. Fedora classroom would be a great thing for ambassadors to work on. I don't know if it would be supplying ideas or maybe helping find people to do the classroom, promoting the classroom episodes. I'm going to write maybe some of all of them. Stuff. Well, that's right. I'm going to put this uh, into the notes here. Fedora classroom could be definitely something ambassadors do, you know, we'd be there kind of trained to get people interested, um, pointing out other things that they could get involved with, et cetera. So that's cool. I also see a lot of benefit in just attending Fedora classrooms. You would know more about Fedora than when you talk to someone, you'll have more talking points. So it always- I should sense. probably go there. I actually did a Fedora classroom once and it didn't get recorded. So, I did it on Fedora badges. I guess I should probably do another one. <laughs> hey, we can always get you a spot. Let me then know when you want it. <laughs> right? Cool. I think I'm also supposed to do a how do you Fedora uh, interview or something. <laughs> it might be deep in my... Yep. <laughs> you must have an email in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So I see people writing stuff in the, in the notepad. That is awesome. Um, I guess this is just a start and I, I'm kind of going to read through this and do a little bit of organizing and thinking about it more. Um, but I think the idea is to distill these into, you know, the role handbooks, right? 
which brings us to our next next thing, which is on the Trello board. And it is in here. Oh, I'm seeing a comment in the chat. I'm gonna read it. Sylvie, I see your thing about the release parties. Guess what? We're doing a virtual release party. Um, in fact, does anyone have a link for that release party thing? Uh, for the preference on dates. Uh, may I say something? Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was still in Latin America that the release parties shift in, in a style. At first, well, they were more installed fast, and we would give away CDs or USB sticks and help people to install the system in the laptops. And then it changed. People started to come, not to install the but to solve problems, to know which uh, open source software they could use instead of the, uh, the paid version or the closed source, or how could they start with Linux, or they saw Fedora or some Linux distribution somewhere, and they were interested to know more. And so it was different. The release party was more about helping people to use Linux or to start using open source rather than uh, helping them to install uh, or giving them a CD ROM. So I, I wanted to note that because I think it's interesting that that shift happened. And I think uh, even now, in, this is like, it, it's more, you see it even clearer that people uh, know better, or at least they have heard somewhere about Fedora or about Linux, and their interest to know more, or their interest to uh, add some open source programs to their Windows installations to kind of get used to it, and maybe it may take the leap later on. Cool. I think that's awesome feedback, you know, people aren't necessarily interested in doing install fest anymore and it is more about that educational aspect so sylvia what you said definitely uh bolsters this idea that like install fest really aren't really aren't um applicable for this day and age so sayak i'm reading your comment here one of the Common feedback from folks who are new to the Linux ecosystem is that they find it a bit over or underwhelming during the initial days. We could also create some content, have events, onboarding calls where we can help newbies get familiar with Fedora. I think that's a really cool idea. I think that's yeah. um, uh, some great community outreach. So something, so we do have the join SIG channel, which I know a lot of people go to and join SIG's going to be part, you know, join SIG's also community outreach, but the idea behind join SIG is that it's extremely uh, low commitment. So it's, it, you know, you just hang out on the channel and do that and that's all it is and that's all they really want it to be. And that's totally fine. So we have that, um, which is like one of the first places a, a contributor might come, but I think doing, I think it's just going to be a matter of framing it so that people will actually come. So I guess I'm going to put this on the list, like onboarding call for newbies. How do we frame? All right. So we're talking contributors and not users, right? Or are we talking users? Sorry. We're talking um, we're talking contributors or users. Yeah, both. I think, I think calls, a... both would be a bit different. Uh, it's like Petra Classroom would be a nice onboarding call for Petra contributors. Uh, early, let's say, Antora, document, uh, Antora guides or onboarding to QA, packaging and things. For users, it would be more of going around and showing things, how to do things in GNOME, how to install applications, how to so, file bug crashes. So, so uh, maybe uh, for uh, users, it, it would make sense to focus a bit more towards the users right now, because 
you know contributors they already have some kind of a knowledge about fedora uh, but for new users uh, a lot of what happens is that there is a lot of new interest coming in from potential users who want to try different things out but they might not stick around uh, long enough to become contributors or even just stay as users in the long term if they do not feel uh, you know comfortable enough so uh, maybe helping users uh, become comfortable in uh, using fedora can go a long way in uh, overall improving the fedora ecosystem as well as getting new contributors onboarded in the later run like if people really like it and stay around and as users they can probably also become great contributors in the future yeah cool. so uh so i have a thought here i mean users it would make more sense to make like content that they can just consume contributors it would make sense to do things like calls you have to think about like the investment how much time we're going to be put into it and how many people it's going to reach right so meanwhile i think we need to move on this is an awesome um conversation i feel like people's uh brains have started like turning with different ideas so that you know you can always jump into this doc that we have the hack md and write ideas in i just wanted to comment um one more time on the chat here and then i think we need to move to the trello board but uh uh, St. Carson says an aspect from a number of good Fedora ambassador centric initiatives in the old days was that they depended a lot on the ability of the individual and a common refrain was for a consistent experience. If that still is a feedback one hears, perhaps an easy start would be to define a template playbook of these activities so it's easily taught to others and we have more extensive skills and experiences in these areas. So Carson, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna make roll handbooks. So uh, I thought that you coming to that exact conclusion and it's already planned was so cool. So I had to read it out loud. <laughs> um, so here we go on the Trello board. You'll see, I'm about to get a link. <clears throat> Everybody, there we are, okay. So these are the tasks specific to this group of people. Um, there is the ambassador group cleanup. That has to do with metrics and communication, uh, some email communications. So uh, basically you're gonna be opening a ticket, use the script to identify the active and inactive ambassadors, Someone needs to prepare check-in emails, send and coordinate those emails. Then eventually we're gonna clean up the membership by moving the inactive members to the ambassador emeritus. Also we wanna document this process and get it, get it added to the ambassador docs page. The next task is gonna be the role handbooks, not next in parallel, I'd say. Um, open a ticket on the ComOps repo, further define the roles of each team role. Um, I put all of them right there. Um, gather feedback, you know, after you've written these docs and, you know, make edits based on that and then add to the comma stock page of the new tab community operation roles. The third task here we're going to wait on because the Mindshare team is actually working on a process for the different seats on Mindshare because a lot of them have gotten a bit stale. So we don't have a process in place. So we're just gonna wait on this one to see what the Mindshare committee decides. They might actually take this work right out of our hands, which would be cool. <laughs> um, but the, uh, something that is not on here is we need to give support to our fellow teams. And we had something scoped for the DNI team that doesn't seem like they have the capability to support right now. And that's totally fine. They have Fedora Women's Day and a bunch of other awesome stuff they're working on. I think if, instead of just trying to force that to happen, let's let's jump in and, and work on that. So, Fred, what did I do with the link? <laughs> oh, it should be over here. Hold on a sec. Uh, I got it. So this is the other thing, instead of, uh, 
the Mindshare seats, we're going to work on this instead. So this is a survey, and it has exactly to do with the conversation that we were just having. Basically gathering feedback from beyond this group of folks further about what a Fedora ambassador should do and feedback about how we think we can grow our community, what kind of things we want to be focusing on, et cetera, et cetera. So I did write in these questions you'll read in the description. I wrote those in like five, 10 minutes, right? So what needs to happen here is we need to take these, which I put in a hack MD, and you'll see lower um, in, the, in the comments there. Um, and they need to be polished and then they need to be formatted for survey. Like, so for example, on a scale of one to five from not satisfied to satisfied, or will this question be open-ended answer, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the other task we're gonna put with the TTF for now. We're gonna try to get the DNI's input on it, but um, we're not gonna uh, have them drive this one. So. Justin, I see you on the call as the lead of the DNI team. I didn't have a chance to talk to you about this yet, but I figured since so much else is going on, it, it wasn't too much of a big deal. So, so right. Those are the kinds of tasks we're looking at. Who's who's up for what? Who's fitting where? What do you where do you see yourself um, being able to to fit into these three tasks? Okay, Justin thinks I it's a good call. Prepared. What's I that, can, Nipple? Yeah, I can take the prepared question and plug them into the Lime survey account if that helps. Yes, that does help. So actually, I'm going to get into our notes real quick and just on the end, I'm going to say, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it. I just will do that for now. Um, Bipple can help with Lime survey. All right. Thank you, Bipple. I know that Alberto it knows that script very well. Alberto, would you be willing to run the script for us for the active inactive ambassadors? Sure. I will do. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to start looking at people's skill sets and calling people out. <laughs> Unless you want to volunteer. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing for that one is we need to write an email. And it'll be a, an email that we also use as a template in the future. So we kind of plan on doing this once a year. Hi, Kitty. Uh, Miko wants to say hi. Um, we will run this once a year. So we need like a template so we can use it the next time. And so we need someone who can draft a letter or an email. Is anyone on the call willing to do that? It's me. Oh, Sylvia can write. All right. Sylvia, would you like to draft uh, that email? Cool. I'm putting it here. Sylvia will draft email. So I think that's probably a good start on that task. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so those are basically the first steps in that task. The next one is role handbooks. And Sylvia, do you want to open the ticket on the ambassador repo? I'm like too many tabs right now. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so that's also the next one. And you can put the draft um, onto the ticket so then we can review it. All right, so now 
next is the roll handbooks. So this is a pretty <laughs> big task, um, but I do have a start of it. And then the conversation that we had today will also inform these, right? So if you go, we go here. So these are historically some of the things that these different teams have done, right? So this is the basis of this document. It's not starting from nothing. And then we can kind of modernize it as well with things we wanna see going forward in the future. So, so yeah, basically it's gonna be writing and editing, et cetera, et cetera, gathering feedback. So is anyone interested in working on some of that? I'm looking at the list. Um, it looks like, hi, my, <laughs> um, both Akash Deep and Sylvia wrote documentation. Who else wrote documentation? Alberto? Uh, yep. <laughs> Are you guys interested in being a part of this? Um, I can pick it, uh, but I would need some hand holding first. I need to, you know, get some information about how this stuff is done. This is my first call per se. And, oh, okay. Um, well, so if you take a look at the wiki link that I put in there, you can read under the responsibilities. Kind of, you know, it'll give you a really good background of what these different teams have been doing to start. So if you just want to start there, you know, I'm not trying to <laughs> dump a task and this is your first call. So, um, yeah. Well, sure. I'll take a look at that link and, um, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, I guess that's getting everything rolling. Saya can help as well. Perfect. And just to let you guys know, we're uh, me and the co-leads. We have like a list of tickets, and the three of us are meeting weekly to help this. You know, so just the three of us and making sure everything's moving along, providing support, giving feedback, um, you know, making changes. You know, for example, we, you know, the DNI team, we realized they weren't going to, they're, they're overloaded right now. So, like, we made the decision to move that away. Um, like, so we're also here to support you. You can reach out to us anytime through Telegram or email or whatever. Not always going to be available. But we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so any of these things that you're like, I'm going to need support, don't worry. Like the three of us are already there. Just include that support in your mind for all of the things that we're going to be working on. Um, and that's and that's my little spiel about that. Last thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, a cadence for a meeting. I would like to establish a regular meeting. These were kind of just kick off, you know, let's fit it in as soon as we can kind of things. But I think I'd like to have a regular cadence. So how do people feel about every two weeks? Or every one week? <laughs> every two weeks sounds good. Every two weeks. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking in the early times, oh, tasks, that's not the right place. Let's open it here. Oops. Meetings. 
maybe we can share a, an etherpad or wiki where we can update agenda before coming uh, yeah. in case if someone can't make it they can write it there and we update it so we need a wiki for the ttf or for these meetings meeting uh, I, I meant mainly for meetings yeah agenda on what we are going to discuss and if someone can't make it they can mention it in extra and someone else can read it out update the updates okay um i think i guess we should try to do it in one of so would you guys prefer an irc meeting or a video meeting i'd go for a video irc meeting. works irc works a <laughs> bit better <laughs> since you can do async and well even when you are doing something you can always join you can go back and sumantro just said spending a lot sumantro of just said video yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay with IRC too. Like no, 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 I'm, I'm just giving uh, Ooh, another chat. aspect of it. Mariana likes oh. Telegram group chat. Yeah, I do too. I won't lie. We could have a TTF Telegram group chat. That's a thing. But then they, you're forcing everyone to use Telegram. I guess I'm forcing everyone to use Google Meet right now. But um, <laughs> oh, Telegram for the win. Text chats. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how about this? What if we do a bi-weekly IRC meetings? Or we could do... We, we could can do, do a, it like concert. Yeah, yeah, but that, they're doing a meeting time. every week, and then just one of those is a video. Uh, you know, uh, something, uh, one of the things that I've noticed, especially in the Mindshare meetings, um, it's really convenient at times uh, because we already have the Telegram to uh, IRC bridge. Uh, so even uh, a lot of times this has happened to me, like I'm out somewhere and I got this notifications on the phone. And even if I'm uh, like out or somewhere, I can still participate. So that's something really nice about uh, the ICTG bridge. And okay. Mort has nice action item recording and topics yeah. in case we are going to yeah, do those that's things properly. Vipul, have I Don't... ever used pound action in a Mindshare meeting? Let's use it from now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but guess what? Things are still happening. Maybe I just run meetings differently. It's a magical way that doesn't yeah, include in this, action uh, items. We'll work on Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the only problem that can happen is that if you have a different uh, uh, nickname on your IRC and on your T Telegram, it becomes hard to identify. I remember I had to uh, continuously keep introducing myself that, hey, I'm Sai, I'm Bucksmith, I'm Sai. So that's the only problem with the TG uh, IRC yeah. bridge. Other than that, everything is fine. Yeah, uh, but uh, if, since uh, we are so small in number, I don't think that would be a problem for more than a week or two. So, Justin, sorry if there was some confusion. Now, this is a separate IRC meeting for the temporary task force on IRC slash Telegram. That seems like what everyone wants. Uh, it's going to be bi-weekly. And then I think um what we should do is it seems like we're going to maybe develop small groups to work around some of these tasks if you need to, if it would make sense for us to get on a call for like you like two or three of us to get on a call to talk about a specific topic like mariana sumantro myself and a couple people we can do that because sometimes face to face you get a lot more done or you have a better understanding of just the idea behind it or whatever. Sometimes text just doesn't do everything you need it to do. So I think we decided on the cadence for the meeting. There was a lot of feelings about this, which is cool. <laughs> all right, guys, this has been an awesome meeting. Thank you so much for all attending. Um, like I said, you can jump into that HackMD and write in whatever uh, notes you want about ambassadors. I don't know. I mean, don't write notes about other things. But um, thanks again. I'm excited. And I will get out information about our biweekly meetings. All right? Okay.
All right, guys. Thanks for coming.